Christ is risen. He is he risen, risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Welcome to worship this Easter Sunday. I am Pastor Amy Welshley of Trinity Lutheran Church in Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin. We are a member congregation of the ELCA. I'm very glad that you are joining us on this day, Easter Sunday. It is wonderful to be together virtually, and we look forward to the day we're together in person. Thank you to those who are helping lead worship today. Our two musicians, Bob Lamuro and John Sines, and council members and staff members, plus their families, who are providing the response to Christ is risen. He is he risen, risen indeed. He is risen indeed. <laughs> If you would like to be featured in a video too, we hope that you will take a video of yourself with the response, he is risen indeed, and email it to me or to Beatrice. We would love to have you included, and I know that people would love to see your face. To get in touch with us, the best way is to go to our website at trinityfort.org. There you will find various ways to connect through Facebook and Instagram. We love having you all participate in, this various, in these various ways. Thank you to those who are continuing to mail in or use Tithely for your offerings. It really does make a difference. Thank you. Let's sing together our hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Please join me as we remember our baptisms with this thanksgiving for baptism. 
joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. From the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for salvation through the waters of baptism. Bathe us in your grace and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity with the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive. Help us grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll sing together our hymn, Thine is the Glory. gospel comes to us today from Matthew, the 28th chapter. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. 
I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell the other disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Growing up, we didn't travel for Easter since our family was involved at church. Occasionally, other family came to us to celebrate. One year, my aunt, my cousins, and my grandparents came, and it was wonderful. After worship that Easter, my sister Julie, my cousins, and I were sent outside to play while the grown-ups visited, boring for eight-year-old me, <laughs> and got Easter dinner ready. Yum. <laughs> Our backyard, it butted up against some woods, and we played there as we usually did. We went on our merry way, playing, hiking, having fun, until we realized we were lost. When our fear set in, we argued about which way to go, about whose fault this was, and about if we'd be found by the grown-ups. Finally, Julie took charge and led us through the trees in what she hoped was the direction of a neighbor's house. After some subdued hiking, complaining, and worrying, we stepped out of the woods and arrived at the neighbors. Julie was right, but they weren't home. So we took to the road and walked about a mile back to our house. Northern Wisconsin, neighbors are far apart. You know, fear is a costly emotion, wasting time, causing arguments. Fear confuses your brain and dredges up other worries that compound the problems in front of you. And fear is hard to release, as the two Marys from our gospel text show us. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary arrive early that first Easter morning they see the guards there. Then an earthquake and an angel reveal the empty tomb for them. The angel says, don't be afraid. Now, friends, we have heard this phrase before. At the beginning of the gospel, when Joseph is worried about marrying an already pregnant Mary, the angel comes to him and says, Joseph, don't be afraid. Later, Jesus says these words to his disciples when he walks on water and when he's transfigured. And now the angel says it again to these faithful women, do not be afraid. And the Marys, they almost follow the angel's command. I mean, they do go and share this good news with the other disciples, but they leave the angel with fear and great joy. That's what the Bible says. The resurrection of Jesus is something to rejoice in, so why the fear? Why not amazement or shock? Why fear? I think it's because the resurrection of Jesus does not immediately change the world they live in. Rome still occupies them, the Jewish authorities are still a threat to the followers of Jesus. Their fear is real and based in reality, despite this good news. The resurrection of Jesus isn't a magic cure. It doesn't change the world they live in. And it doesn't change ours either. 
Coronavirus controls our daily lives. Some politicians remain corrupt. Racism is still real. So is terrorism and, well, all the isms. No, the resurrection of Jesus Christ doesn't change the world we live in, but it does change how we live in the world. The resurrection of Jesus changes how we live in the world. We live with hope in the face of hatred and injustice. We live with determination to love our neighbors as much as we love ourselves. We live seeking peace in our hearts and in the world. We try to live lives of forgiveness, joy, and love, all because of this day. The resurrection of Jesus Christ changes how we live in the world, and by it, we change the world we live in. This is what being a follower of Jesus is all about, living like we actually believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. For example, during Lent, we at Trinity Lutheran Church said, we're not giving up, we're giving back. We didn't give up the typical chocolate or video games as a self-sacrifice during Lent. No, we dug in got creative, and found ways to give back to our community in the name of Jesus. We donated a carload of diapers, wipes, and baby clothes to people who needed them, and I bet they're coming in handy right about now. Our fifth and sixth graders led us in collecting items for the Homeless Coalition. The Little Free Pantry is coming to life during this quarantine. This is just a sample of the projects we did during Lent. And why did we do this? Because the resurrection of Jesus Christ changes how we live in the world. On the cross, we see God more clearly than anywhere else. If we truly see Jesus, God incarnate, on the cross, then we see love, compassion, and mercy dying for us, not condemning. The one who dies for us and rises again doesn't send a deadly virus to whip us into shape. That kind of wrong thinking turns the cross of Christ into a gotcha moment. No, the cross is a sacrifice of love and the empty tomb proves it. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, they leave the empty tomb with fear and great joy, like we feel today. As Christians, we rejoice because Christ is risen. But we fear how long our physical distancing will last. We fear the stress on our dedicated health care workers. We fear getting sick ourselves or those that we love. Today of all days, fear and great joy fill our hearts. But we keep moving forward in this wilderness like the Marys do, like my sister led us through the woods. These women are afraid, but they go anyway. With fear and great joy, they go and they immediately encounter the risen Jesus. Think of that, will you? You do not have to be unafraid or perfect to be found by Jesus. Go anyway. Speak the good news like Mary Magdalene and the other Mary first did. Live like you believe this is true. The resurrection of Jesus Christ changes us, and by it we change the world. Christ is risen. Thanks be to God. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We'll sing together our final hymn, Now All the Vault of Heaven Resounds. Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God. <laughs>